All right, let's turn on our tiny SA. We come up in the de default condition and uh, I'm inputting a 14 megahertz signal. That's not real, that one there. Um, let's go to zoom in on it. So we're gonna go to frequency center. We're gonna go to 14 megahertz. And there we go, getting a nice looking, uh, nice looking display. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. So we'll do a span of 160 kilohertz. Now I've noticed that the x-axis always wants to be in multiples of four, so you can go 100, 160 kilohertz, 80 kilohertz, things like that, and then you'll get uh, the uh, the lines matching up to things that you understand. So, so there we go. And uh, we have, I've just turned off my modulation, so we'll just have a, a, a CW carrier, and uh, that's what it looks like. So we have some phase noise down there at the bottom. Let's see if we can't get rid of that. So this is all auto mode. You'd think it would pick all the right things, but it doesn't. So it's picking us a resolution bandwidth of 2.6 kilohertz. Now you would think that'd be really good. That's the smallest this thing knows how to go. But if I actually change the resolution bandwidth to three kilohertz, which you would think is worse, the, the display gets better, okay? So don't ever use auto, always use uh, manual. Three kilohertz is better than 2.6, don't know why. And then the other thing that we want to do in order to get rid of some of this phase noise is we're going to put in more attenuation. So we are going to go to level, attenuate, manual, and we will put in 30 dB of attenuation. We know we have a zero dBm signal, so we're going to attenuate it below minus 30. You always want to be looking at signals below minus 30 dBm. So either use an external um, attenuator to drop it down or use the internal one. Now the internal one only goes to 30, so we've, or we've maxed out here, but we get a better, we have a, a better looking display now. Okay. So let me turn on the modulation. I have modulation programmed in here of uh, 10 kilohertz and um, it's displaying really, really well. It's, dis it's distinguishing between the side lobes really, really well. Now let me show you something. Let me go back to the uh, attenuator and I'll go to auto. And there you go. That's what the auto does, right? So the auto just completely messes you up. So uh, it's choosing a 10 dB attenuation, which is just ridiculous. So we need to go back to attenuate, go to manual, go to 30. Now things are looking good. Now let me show you another thing. If we go to resolution bandwidth and we go to auto, it gets worse again. <laughs> so it puts in a whole bunch more phase noise. So it, it dropped from three kilohertz down to 2.6 kilohertz. You'd think it would get better and it gets a whole lot worse. So let's go back to uh, resolution bandwidth and we'll set it to three kilohertz. Now things look great. So <laughs> do manual settings for attenuation and do manual settings for resolution bandwidth, right? So make sure that your signals are below minus 30 dBm and things will be better. And then play with your resolution bandwidth until you get a good looking image. Now there's nothing magical about three kilohertz. It's just, it's better than auto. Okay, so for whatever you're looking at, try different resolution bandwidth settings and to get the best image. Um, but there we go. The, uh, if, I, if I saw that in auto mode, I would be just super, super, super impressed. Now I think this is just software. So um, I'm reaching out to the uh, tiny SA team. Um, you know, take a look at these things. I believe you can actually do much, much better choosing the correct settings for a particular case.